Now, when it comes to JavaScript, we don't really have a way to generate a random number between one and another number inside JavaScript. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can actually do this using JavaScript. So as you can see in front of me here, I do have a completely standard index.html page that we're going to work inside of. And what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to introduce two methods inside JavaScript that we're actually going to use in order to create this random number inside JavaScript. So inside my script tags, I want to show you the first one, which is something called math floor. Now, remember, we talked about objects in the past many episodes. When it comes to JavaScript, we have two types of objects. We have the ones that we create ourselves as a user, and then we also have built-in objects. Now, in order for us to create something that gives us a random number inside JavaScript, we're going to use an object called the math object. Now, the math object has a bunch of properties and methods that is built into it. They can just go ahead and use in order to create something using JavaScript. So I want to talk about two different methods inside the math object. The first one is going to be the one called math dot floor parentheses, which is a method inside the math object that allow for us to round down to the nearest integer using a random number. So if we were to go inside this method here and say inside the parentheses, I have a number such as let's say 8.6 then it's going to round the number down to the nearest integer, meaning that this would actually end out becoming eight without the 0.6 behind it. If I were to write something like 2.2, .2, then we're going to get two because it's going to round it down. Now, this also goes for negative numbers. If I were to say minus 2.2, .2, we're actually going to get minus three because it's going to round down and because minus is already going down, if you remember that from math class, it's going to round down to the next minus number, which is three. So this is the first one we need to know about. The second one is one called math.random. And the math.random method is one that generates a random number between zero and one, not including the one, which means that if we were to just run this method, I will get some kind of random decimal point that is really long. Let's actually go and run it just to test it out. So if we were to do a console log, console.log, and then log, let's create a variable here that is easier. Let's call this one calc and say equal to math.random. Run it inside the browser. You can see that we get this long decimal point inside the browser. And don't worry about the, the four numbers on the next line. It's just because there's no more space. So it is just cutting it down to the next line here. So we're getting a long random number behind a decimal point. Now, using these two methods, we can already create a random number inside JavaScript. And if you're not in school anymore, this is going to take you back to math class because this is going to take a little bit of math in order to figure out how to get this random number. Or if you're in school already, then you can sort of get a refresher course on your math class. So um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to take this step by step to show you how we can get this random number. Now, I'm going to start out with what we have right here because this is actually a perfect start. Right now, we're creating a random number. And of course, this is just going to give us what we have inside the browser here. So it's not really going to do anything when it comes to giving us a random whole number between something and something. So the next thing we need to do is in order to get a whole number, we first of all need to move the decimal point to the right side by a certain amount. So if I want to have a number between something and 10, then I need to move it one decimal point. If I want to get a number between something and 100, then I need to move it two decimal points in order to get a number inside this random generated number here. So to start with, we're going to go ahead and multiply this by 10. And if we were to refresh the browser, you can now see that we're going to get seven point blah, 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 three point blah, 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 and so on and so on and so on between one and 10. Well, actually between zero and nine, because right now, like I said before, uh, the random generated number never goes to one, which means that we can never get 10 inside this specific calculation here. So how do we solve that? Well, what we can do is first of all, I can put this inside parentheses just to make sure that again, using math, that this is calculated by itself first before we do anything else. So after the parentheses, I can say plus one, which means that right now we're not going to get a number between zero and nine, but instead we're going to get a number between one and 10. So if we were to save this, refresh the browser, you can see we can actually, if we were to refresh it enough times, 
we will actually get 10 inside the browser, which we couldn't before we added the one number inside our calculation. So what about all the decimal points? We need to get rid of the, uh, blah, we need to get rid of them. So the next thing we can do is we can actually go ahead and add our floor math method inside this calculation here. So before anything inside the calculation, I'm going to say we have a math object. Make sure you do write math with a capitalized M because it's an object dot floor parentheses. I'm just going to go ahead and put the calculation inside the parentheses here like so. So now if we were to go inside the browser, you can see we get five, nine, one, five, five. Well, that is actually pure random. It's not because five is going to get generated more, uh, but we get a random number between one and 10 in order to get this calculation going here. So this sort of explains what exactly is going on when we want to create this random number. And again, if you look at the previous episode where we did actually create a game inside the browser, you can see that taking the equation we used there, it's very similar to what we did here. It's actually pretty identical to it. I think we just don't have parentheses in quite the same places. Um, so how about making this into something we can actually use inside our browser? Because right now, if we were to use this inside an actual JavaScript project or script, then we can't really use this in a very good way. Now, there's also another problem here, which is that right now, we're generating a random number between one and 10. But what if we want to start at eight and 10 and have a number in between there? Well, then we need to do it in a slightly different way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function that we can reuse as many times as we want inside our script. And this function is going to allow for us to create a random number between two numbers and not just between zero or one and some kind of number, which we just created here. So I'm going to delete what we have here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a anonymous function. So I'm going to say we have a lit variable. I'm just going to go ahead and call this one something like get random number. And this is actually a function that if you want to, you can just go ahead and include at the top of any kind of script you might have. And then you can just simply call this function inside your script and then get a random number. So what I want to do here is so first of all, I want to uh, create this random number that we just created in, well, a few seconds ago. So inside of here, I'm going to create a let variable and I'm going to call this one something like get random because we just need to get this random number. I'm going to set equal to the exact same thing as we had before. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it in. Let me actually see if I can grab it here. There we go. And there's one problem here though. And let me just go ahead and shift this over so we have everything in one line. There's one problem, which is that right now, everything is fixed. We don't have any kind of dynamic variables that we can change. So right now it's just gonna give us a number between one and 10 each time or if you want to get a number between one and a hundred, then we can do like so, and then get one between one and a hundred, just to show you. Um, so what we need to do is we need to include some outside variables that we can bring into the function and replace these numbers with. So I'm going to go inside the function up here, inside the parentheses, and I'm going to include a start, comma, and a range. So we have a starting number we would want to start from. So if we want to start at eight till 10, then we can include eight and 10 inside the parentheses here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring these variables into the equation of inside the function. So the first number I want to bring in is going to be the range, which is going to be the max generated number we can have inside this equation here. So right now we set that as 10. So I'm going to take the range, copy it, and just replace the 10 inside the equation. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to get the starting number. Now, right now, remember when we want to create this random, uh, we create a random number using the random method we have in here, we start at zero. And in order to start at one, we added one at the end of the parentheses here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace the one with the number that I want to start with inside uh, our equation here, or inside the, the generated number. And of course this has to be the start, not the range. And now that we did this, what is going to happen inside the browser when I refresh and actually run this function? Let's actually go ahead and try it out. So I'm going to say we have parentheses. Let's go ahead and say I want to run something between five and 10 and get a, a random generated number. And of course, we also need to return the value in here. So we need to say return get random because we need to actually return the value in order to use the function. So 
There we go. Now, if I were to go inside the browser and refresh, you can see that we're going to get something a little bit weird because if we were to refresh, you can see we get six, we get 12, but wait a second, 12 is above 10. Hmm, we get nine, 13. Something weird is happening here. And that's because right now, when we add uh, a starting number to the start of the randomly generated uh, number we're going to get, it's also going to add the same number as the maximum. So if I were to say, well, it has to start at five, then it's also going to include five more at the maximum number we can get inside the equation. So how do we solve that? Well, we haven't really talked about something called loops yet. Well, we have used it in the previous lessons a couple of times, but we haven't had a exact lesson on loops yet. Now, what I'm going to do to solve this issue is right after we get the random number, right before we actually return the random string or the random number, I'm going to run something called a while loop. Now a while loop is going to run a certain string of code or block of code as long as a certain condition is true inside the parentheses of the while loop. So what I can do is I can say, well, if the randomly generated number is greater than the range that I set inside the function, then it's going to rerun the equation and it's going to keep doing that until it's not going to get a number that is greater than the range that we set inside the function. So just to show you how we do that inside the while parentheses condition, I'm going to say, well, while get random is greater than the range, then it's going to run this function or this specific string that we have in here or equation. I think we're going to call it equation. It's going to rerun the equation as many times as it takes for the random number to not be greater than the range. So if we were to save this, go inside the browser, refresh, then you can see we get nine, five, seven, and so on and so on and so on. But we're never gonna get anything greater than the number that we set down here, and we're, and we're not gonna get anything lower than five, which we also set down here. So what I could do is I could say, well, let's say, uh, let's say a thousand, and let's go ahead and say 500. Then when I generate something, you can see we get random numbers between these two different uh, numbers that we set down here. So this is how we can create a random number using JavaScript. And this is also how we can create a function that we can just go ahead and paste at the top of our scripts and we create any kind of script using JavaScript so that we can then call on in order to get a random number. So anytime you need to get a random number, you just need to call on your function and run it. So I hope it was a lot of fun for you to see how we could generate a random number between one number and another number using JavaScript. Since I couldn't really find anything online that said how to create a random number between one and another number, I could only find it on generated from zero or one to, you know, some kind of maximum. So I definitely had a lot of fun preparing this episode since I like to do math, which is a good thing since JavaScript has a lot of math in it. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next episode.